From the Owl's Nest Barbecue Research and Development Studio in Ottawa, Tennessee, it's time for the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show with Steve Ray and his vast array of guests. From right here in Ottawa and from across the barbecue nation, it's time to light the grill, cook the meat, and then repeat. Now live, it's the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show with Steve Ray. Welcome to the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show on a Wednesday night. The Owl's Nest Barbecue Studios, high above White Oak Mountains in Old Watt, Tennessee. The Owl's Nest Barbecue Show is brought to you by Steve Ray's Midnight Oil and Michelin Tires. When you need tires, service, and gasoline, you need us. Steve Ray's Midnight Oil in Ottawa. And we're also brought to you by the complete line of butcher barbecue products, rubs, injections, grilling oils, and all his accessories. Trust your butcher. Make your next cookout epic. The products from Butcher Barbecue available locally at Steve Ray's Midnight Oil in Ottawa. Follow us on YouTube for all the past interviews on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show and some special segments we do from time to time. Check us out on YouTube. You can also find us on Vimeo as well. Follow our barbecue adventures on Facebook, on my personal page, Steve Ray, and on the official Owl's Nest Barbecue page. Like us on Facebook. Also check out all the great pictures and sometimes we sometimes post on Instagram of some great barbecue and all the great stuff surrounding barbecue, like friends, family, and all that kind of stuff at Udawa Steve on Instagram. Give us a follow and you can also follow me in person at the midnight oil in Ultawa. Thank you, Emma, but don't be creepy about it. If you come there in person, go on, Emma, have a seat, have a seat. Folks, we've got a we've got a jam packed show. But first, I want to tell you, I don't know how all the people that came by the gas station yesterday and bought, or not yesterday, last week rather, and bought the uh, holiday turkey injection kit from Butcher Barbecue. They they called me this week and said, Chris Harden from up on from up on Snow Hill Road called and said, Steve, that is the best turkey I've ever smoked and have ever tasted. He used the butcher barbecue uh, kit, the injection and the hickory salt rub. Great reviews from everybody. We sold out. I I'm sorry, folks. I know a lot of people came by looking for it. We had already sold out. I've got some more coming. I've got about uh, two dozen coming between now and Christmas time. So as Christmas time gets closer, uh, watch my Facebook page. Of course, watch here every Wednesday. And we'll be talking about that. That's the uh, holiday Turkey uh, kit for, uh, from butcher barbecue with injection, the uh, dry brine bag, and hickory salt. It'll do a great job on your turkey for uh, uh, Christmas, too. Um, I cooked I cooked a bunch of turkeys, and they, they all turned out great. We did a ham, and that turned out not so, not so great. I thought we could do a fresh ham. And, man, I need a lesson. I need to go down to Couch's Barbecue and have Kenny Steiner show me how to do a fresh ham. Folks, we, we, one of the few times I, I did a fresh ham and it was not edible. It was terrible. It was terrible. I don't know. I don't know much about hams, but I know this one wasn't cured. And, and everybody that knows about hams now is probably laughing that I even tried to do that. So, uh, so next year, but, but by hopefully maybe by Christmas with Kenny's help, I'll go down there and we'll, uh, get straightened out. We've got a, a fantastic show for you. Jim Elzer is going to lead it off tonight. He's with Sweet Smoke Q. If um, uh, if you're a barbecue follower of a barbecue competition teams, especially the uh, uh, Florida Barbecue Association, Frank, you've heard of Jim Elzer, Sweet Smoke Q. He, he and his brother, they are a, 
a fantastic duo, and Jim's going to join us here in just a few moments. And after Jim coming up at about 740, folks, we got big news in, in our area. Chris Finkbone from Lafayette, Georgia, will be here. The Honey Bee Barbecue Festival is going to be a KCBS event next May. So if, if all you local guys have always wanted to try a KCBS type contest, but you just didn't want to, you know, travel and, and go, we've got one in our backyard coming up in May. And uh, Chris is going to be here at 740 to tell you all about it. Now, if now we've got Jim Elzer coming up, and I, I just want to say this. If you have a question about cooking barbecue, please, please, by all means, use this opportunity to put your question on Facebook. My daughter, Emma, sitting right next to me, she will read all of the Facebook questions that are posted uh, to Jim when we get him on here. And please don't be bashful. Please share your uh, questions with us. Emma will ask Jim. We'll get Jim here on in just a few moments. And um, and and uh, you can ask Jim anything about barbecue. He is a uh, – folks, this guy, this guy is the real deal, Jim Elzer. And you just – we're going to get him on the phone here in just a second through Skype. And uh, you will um, – you'll see what I mean when, when Jim comes on. He is uh, – not only is the barbecue cook, he's a, uh, a barbecue in the manufacturing – realm of barbecue jim are you on hey steve i'm here how you doing man good to hear from you you doing okay you know what i think i did i think i just hung up on him and i don't know why i do that so let's see if we can't grab jim again i think i did that you still there jim i'm here how oh, are you? okay i'm sorry i thought i'd hung up no. on you now, now now folks let me, let me tell you a little bit about Jim Elzer, who's on the phone with us. He's a pitmaster of Sweet Smoke Q Barbecue Team. He's a world barbecue. He's a world food barbecue champion. He is a world food 2018 barbecue finalist. Jim appeared on one of the greatest barbecue television episodes of Smoke, where he beat his arch rival, Matt Barber, even after falling down in front of a national television <laughs> audience he's the former president of the florida barbecue association and he was a participant in the 2018 jack daniels barbecue world championship jim i don't know how you could get any bigger than that <laughs> oh there's always uh always time and uh you know to get bigger but you know we're we we have had a uh a pretty good uh run the last this is um in january it'll be my 10th year so mm -hmm. i think i'm pretty uh pretty blessed in uh you know what what we've done in the last you know the 10 years so it's it's you know it's it's been a it's been a great run and hopefully it continues i've got i've got to cook against you a couple times and you always win big surprise there <laughs> but hey let me let me just throw out two numbers to you real quick 62 sure. to 39 do those numbers mean anything to you what was that again 62 to 39 Oh yeah, yeah. That 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 was uh that was that was a a good day on Saturday. I was uh, of course it was. I was sitting there watching the game. I said, you know, I've got Jim Elzer coming on Wednesday. This is going to be a good week. I said because he's going to be all pumped up <laughs> from his big Ohio State Buckeye win over the uh, they hated Michigan Wolverines and Jim Harbaugh. Did you did you see that press conference with Jim Harbaugh at the end of the game by chance? <laughs> I think it was very short, I remember, but it was not that long. Uh, he, you, I wish you could have seen Harbaugh. He was just – he was dying. You could just tell he was about to come out of his skin. <laughs> but anyway, enough about football. Yeah, you know, Jim, you have got so much going on. And, and I really – it's really hard for me to know where to even start. And, folks, please join in. If you've got a question for Jim, please put it on Facebook – We'll give it to Emma, and Emma will ask Jim the question. Emma, I've got my, my daughter, Emma, here with the side with me. And if you hear a little girl's voice asking you a question, that's a Facebook question, okay? Sure. All right. Uh, I, you know, it's hard for me to even know where to start with me. It, it, being in the uh, barbecue business full-time, and we'll tell everybody about that in a minute, and being a full-time 
barbecue cook and professional. Which which part do you like best? Because that's the where that's the where we're going to take off on this thing. Well, the the best part is um, is going to uh, you know at, at going to a competition and being at a competition. That's where you know I, I compete pretty much almost forty times a year. I think this year will probably be about thirty eight. So that's where I'm. That's where it's pretty much uh, routine. I should say routine. Um, mm-hmm. My daily, you know, from from Monday to Thursday, it's really not a. It's somewhat routine, but once I hit the road and get to a contest, contest, it's a it's a routine thing. So um, that's where I, I'm 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 comfortable. I, I know what I need to get done and and and, and things like that during the Monday and uh, Monday through Thursday. It's you know it's just trying to you know, put out fires, you know, get get things done, and you just never know what's going to pop up on a you know a day to day or hourly basis. So it sounds like it sounds like you've got you enjoy both of them and you know we've already we've already got a question about uh your products emma go ahead and read uh jim the question and then we'll and we'll fill everybody else in go ahead emma when will the bird juice hit the open market that's a good question mm-hmm. uh, i get that question a lot uh the bird juice is obviously we got the you know, pork, uh, pork pork juice and the beef juice and i've been using uh, the bird juice for years and uh, the thing with that is to put it in a bottle and get it shelf stable um it's a little bit different um because you have to uh you know and, and i don't want to put preservatives and other other factors in there so we're still trying to work uh, you know the, the formula out to where we can actually actually bottle it so hopefully um uh, and um uh, i would say hopefully beginning of the uh the you know, the, maybe the second quarter of the 2019 that might come out, but um, we're working on some other products we can get into later. But th- that's that's the that's the issue right now we're working with. And and you know, there's I always say there's not enough hours in the day to to get everything done. You know, we're we're a very small business, and we have a you know few few people. You know that that pretty much uh, you know we don't really have any full full time employees, but you know, we have some people that you know part time depends yeah. on what we got going on. So. Right. I put on I, I put on a lot of hats, you know, during the week and just like I said, there's a lot of times there's just not enough hours in the day. I'm still at my shop, you know, working on working on stuff right now. So I'm putting in, you know, eleven good eleven, twelve hours a day. So now, now I enjoy what, it. and for everybody watching on Facebook, I wanna I wanna fill you in. Jim is not only a, a competition barbecue cook and champion as they call him, he has a, a business, Sweet Smoke Q. And Jim, what I've done, I brought up a picture of uh, your blue uh, uh, QDS um, smoker drum. Jim has a line of um, drum smokers. He also has a line of uh, injections, uh, sweet smoke Q juices. And um, Jim, I think you've got uh, sauces as well. Yes, we have sauces, and then we are actually uh, getting ready within probably the next month, if not sooner. We have three of our uh, rubs that you know I've been using for years, so I decided to uh, to get them out there. You know, there's there's a lot of times where you don't like to 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 give your component or your your competitors, you know, the stuff that you've been using. But you know, at the end of the day, it's a business, and that's the way to make some money. So we're we're gonna roll out some uh, three uh, three rubs. Uh, we got another. Uh, we got two uh, sauces right now that's available, and we're working on a few more and some other products. So I think 2019. Is going to be a, uh, uh, you know, it's looking like a, we're going to uh, roll out a lot of products. So, well, you've got you've got one of the the coolest things that I've that I've seen, and I I've I've had a little bit of experience on them, Jim. Is these are these drum cookers, and they mm-hmm. are they are taking the 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 not not only the competition barbecue. Uh, arena, but these these people are, are in the backyard business and people that just want to make good barbecue, these things are sweeping the nation. Uh, yeah. They're yeah. Be- and we, and we, uh, yeah, we, like I said, we sell a lot to just the backyard. Yeah. Uh, backyard folks. And it just, you know, they, they see it on TV. They want to, you know, they want to cook some good barbecue for their, you know, the family in the neighborhood. And, and, you know, these drums, uh, they're fairly inexpensive. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to, you know, to produce some, you know, some uh, competition, you know, or, or very good quality barbecue. I pulled um, up, I've pulled up yeah. a picture here on the, it's over my, uh, 
over my right shoulder. These, um, I, I, Jim, I, I, I'm assuming they just start as, out as a 55 gallon RD drum. And, uh, then you, yes, then yeah, you we, tell us about yeah, the modification. The, yeah. Tell us about the modification on these. Yeah, we, we purchased, uh, we have a company, uh, we have a company that makes, uh, makes these especially for us. Um, and, and then we, get them, they're basically raw uh, carbon steel. So we bring them in and we, we weld some components on it onto us and, um, you know, make them, you know, we have different models and depends on what model and what options, you know, we can go through anything from the, your basic to pretty much anything you want. You know, we could probably, you know, put your, put your face on there or, or, or whatever. Um, so we, we bring them in and, 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 you know, do some fabrication on them. And then they, uh, at the end, we, uh, we are a, a powder coated finish, which powder coated, powder coated is a lot more durable than paint. Um, it's actually a, a, a process you spray it on as a powder form and then you actually bake it at a high, mm-hmm. high temperature. Yeah. That makes a nice finish and, it, and that finish stays on there for a long time. Um, yeah, yeah. As long as you don't leave the lid open and, and burn, because you know, powder coat it's only rated really up to about you know, you know, six hundred degrees. Which uh, in a smoker, even at you know, hot and fast, you're, you know, you, it, it's not getting up to those those temperatures. Um, and we have a uh, our, our charcoal basket is is um, designed to you know, kind of, kind to kind of uh, to insulate that bottom half there where your heat is going more. Uh, the majority of your heat is going upwards, not outwards. Mm-hmm. Explain and and explain how uh, on your drum. I don't know if um, do you have a hanging mechanism or is yours strictly on a uh, a grate? Um, we we have we we have uh, you know uh, rib hangers or meat mm-hmm. hangers. Uh, that that's an option on there. And there's a there's actually three levels. Uh, the first two levels um, are you can. You can put your, your grates, and there's, they come standard with two grates. The third level is, and which comes standard, is a heat deflector. Uh, we use that um, when you're cooking low and slow. Hot and fast kind of don't use that, mm-hmm. so take that out. And then if you want to actually grill, you know, actually grill a steak or grill something, you can put that rack on that bottom level. Uh-huh. And, and so, it's, you know, you can, you can sear, you know, a, a steak or, or something just like, a, you know, a Weber grill or any other type of grill. Jim, I've got a picture of the um, the silver one with the orange painting on it, and it looks like mm-hmm. I'm, it looks like it's at the bottom of the smoker, and it's got a um, looks like some sort of a damper connected to a rod. Uh, tell the folks how the how tell the folks how easy it is mm-hmm. to maintain and and to get these drums up to temperature. Well, the easiest way, you know, I, you know, I'm looking on the, on Facebook, and what you're seeing is there. That's the uh, that's we have basically three models uh the qds the qds x the qds x2 which that's what you're looking at uh-huh. the x2 is just a version of the 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 original um they they were they were meant to uh use with a temperature controller which we actually manufacture we make here mm-hmm. um or you can get a you know get another um another name brand uh temperature controller that we make adapters for so you don't have to use ours um, but that's how they were for the, you know, I've been, I've been cooking on these things for probably nine years and, yeah. and sell them. I started selling them locally, um, you know, eight years ago and, you know, they were all made for, made for, with, with the temperature controller, which that's the easiest way I say. If yeah. you can, if you can uh, cook on your oven and, you know, it's a set it and forget it. Um, a lot of, and then we came up with the X2 because we wanted, there was there was demand for people who didn't want want the controller or if they were you know didn't have power or or whatever we needed to add a larger uh, inlet so that's what you're looking at right there is okay. an you know an inlet at the bottom where um, I don't know if you get the other picture where there's another uh, there's a hand screw up on top where you right you know you turn that to open and close that yeah, that inlet that, to regulate it. your temperature Maybe that's it right there. and um, no, by doing that it's pretty you know once you get the hang of it where to open your exhaust and your inlet you, that thing will you know I, I cooked some ribs um, last week I just pulled one out in the shop and cooked some ribs for um, a neighbor uh, and, and that thing purred at 275 all day long without any control you know you know the selling point of the um, ceramic cookers, uh, the Weber cookers, 
where was always how easy it was to control the temperature. The downside to those, there was no room in them. Once you put a, a pork butt in there, uh, there's very little room to cook two unless you, you know, you got to spend a lot of money to get that extra large one. And what I like about your drums, there's plenty of room in there to, to cook uh, a backyard barbecue. I, I'm, I'd say, what can you get in there comfortably? Maybe five butts, maybe six. You can get comfortably six butts comfortably. Mm -hmm. uh, I had put, I had put eight butts in there. Um, but you would want, the more meat you put in there, the more product you put in there, uh, it, 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 it affects the airflow. Uh -huh. So that's where, you know, the auto temperature controller actually forces air in there. Uh, and it makes it easier to run with either the more meat you have in there. But you know, if you don't, if you don't restrict the airflow, you know, you don't need that controller. Right. To, um, but comfortably six, uh, three, three butts on, on, on a rack is, you know, easily doable. Um, what is what is what is the different price points on these? Because that's what uh, Tony and, and Chris and Ann and Teresa they they've all joined us here on Facebook, and every I'm mean, of course everybody always says how much how much how much, but what mm -hmm. the price point on your drums is is they, very very right. affordable. They start, man. Yeah, yeah, they start off with uh, six ninety nine. That's for the X two with no controller. Um, if you want the uh, just the original QDS, that starts off at or. That's basically you. You can get that um, at seven forty nine. That comes with a controller, uh, two racks, heat de heat deflector, um, everything you need to go for seven forty nine. And and we we only charge um, seventy nine dollars to ship a flat rate shipping throughout the you know the U S. So mm -hmm. it's very affordable for under you know nine hundred dollars. You can you can have a you know a, a totally automated an automated um, you know to smoker. I, I we spoke with uh, Rub. Bagby, your buddy, uh, last mm -hmm. Wednesday night, mm -hmm. and he said that he's cooking with two of them right right now, two of your drums, and uh, mm -hmm. and we know how good he is, and we know how good you are. So it would be if 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 you're looking for a a, a unique cooker, something different, but something that doesn't break the bank, and you can get plenty of meat on. Jim, I, I can't see not not giving these QDSs a look they're they're just it's it's just a it seems like to me a very affordable vessel and uh one that you know you get shipped for seventy nine dollars what's what's your website where people can go find them uh you can you can find all the information on uh, uh sweet smoke the letter q dot com mm -hmm. and all the information's on there um and we do a lot in in and you've seen that the orange and the the silver one that's you know we do a lot of custom i think majority of them we do custom um, you send your logo or, you know, your, your whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I can eat, actually, before, you know, we, you called, I was working on a mock-up. We can, we can actually mock up, um, a t uh, somebody sent me their logo, a couple logos. So I'm actually mocking it up on the computer to send them to see what it looks like before it's even, uh, oh, produced. so That's you, cool. you, you, you can see what it actually looks like, uh, you know, so the, that's that's an option there too and i get that all the time you know they want different colors and we can you know they don't like this or this you know we can we can change everything just on the computer before we actually go and uh you know manufacture it you know i always like to ask ask my guests when we're talking what what got you started in barbecue um i i love to cook not necessarily barbecue but i love to cook um i remember cooking you know uh, you know when i was I don't know. I was young and I think my mom can chime in. I, I seen that she's watching here. Um, I, I can, re as far as I can remember, I was always interested in, 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 you know, cooking, you know, at home and just, you know, not necessarily barbecue. Um, so how I got into barbecue originally from Ohio. Uh, now I've been I'm in Florida since, um, Oh five. And before I moved to Florida, after I graduated college, I was always have friends and family over they were always like every time was, oh, can you make us some ribs can you make us some pork can you? Yep. and that's all they wanted yep. and i started off as with a um uh with a with a little red brinkman um where we all see those um mm -hmm. and that's what i started cooking with and uh um, the drum they come to florida the drum a and little then drum. i come to florida and and come to florida um the uh obviously the lakeland pig fest was a, is a big thing here and that's pretty much in my backyard so i came here and 
went to the, the Lakeland Pig Fest and had one in uh, Winter Haven um, every year. And I thought, man, I can, I can cook better barbecue than these guys. Didn't realize that these, these were vendors, you know, not the, not the pro guys cooking. So uh, me and my son at the time, um, he was, at the time, he was probably 13, four, probably 13. Two weekends, we, we, um, we, we uh, manuf- uh, fabricated up a, uh, just a, an old cabinet smoker. Didn't just went two weekends. Went to my first contest uh, ten years ago, and now I never thought I'd have a business in barbecue. So, is your is yeah, your I background is your background in engineering? Were you an engineer? Or are yes, you? yes, yes. I'm a mechanical engineer. So I, you know, I, I did I did that for 22 years, and you know, I, I just always said, you know, when I got out of college, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be an I'm, I'm gonna work in this field for 20 years, and then I'm gonna find something else to do. You know, because you know, I just, I, I like to, I'm, I'm very creative. And if I'm, I'm at a job for, for a long time and I only had maybe, you know, three engineering jobs and, you know, just get bored. I'm always wanting to learn. So, mm-hmm. and if I got stale or bored at a job, another job, I went to, I, I went and found another job to, to learn more. And, um, after, after about 22 years and then being in, in, you know, I was doing just as many contests, um, you know, two years ago, I've been, uh, been working for myself for two years, a little over two years now. And, and I was working full time at my engineering job and this business was a full time job. And I couldn't, I could not take it any, you know, I couldn't, I was, I was pulling my hair out and yeah, burning the candle on both ends. It, it just burning the midnight oil. And, and I just said, all right. And it, it, I just didn't say, all right, I'm going to, I'm just going to quit my uh, good paying engineering job just to, to do barbecue. <laughs> it was, it was a plan, you know, it's probably a, you know, a three or four year plan. And I, you know, put, got all my ducks in a row. And, and one day I, I, I went into, you know, my boss's office and said, all right, I need to either a, I, I, I need to, you know, put my two week notice in, or I need to go down to part time. So I, we just, they didn't want to lose me. So I went to part-time for uh, about seven months and as an engineer, part-time just didn't really work out. Cause you, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it, you're putting more than 40 hours in, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're working, you know, it, you know, and I was working a lot. So part-time as an engineer didn't really work out. So we just parted ways and, um, here I am. Hey, um, Jim, our, our, our friend here in Ottawa has got a question for you. Go ahead, Emma. How much charcoal? How much charcoal? Um, depends on the, the type of charcoal. I mean, obviously, there's some better better charcoal out there than others. If you use a decent brand, um, you know, um, and, and I use lump, and you can use briquette. Yeah, I was going to ask that. But I can, I can do – I cook on two uh, QDSs at a contest, and, I, I, um, and I'm a low and slow kind of guy. Uh, so my, my – my QDSs are pretty much, you know, going, um, well, you know, maybe 16 hours at times. Wow. And I use, I use less than, um, it was probably about, I probably use about 15, 17 pounds of charcoal, if that. And in I both, still have, I both. still have some extra, oh, you know, and I just close it down and use it for the next contest. So, so, so you're I'm doing... probably actually. Go ahead. I'm probably actually, I'm probably actually using a total burn chart, you know, I would say probably less than 14 pounds, you know, 12 to 14 pounds. if that. So you cook on two for the entire contest. Well, I cook, I cook on two. I, I cook, I cook on two and then I, uh, I cook on uh, two uh, green mountain uh, pellet grills. Um, but everything mm-hmm. uh, I, I cook, I cook overnight um, brisket and pork overnight. I pull my pork butts. They go on the green, green mountain when I wrap them. Mm-hmm. And then I put my ribs on in the morning and my chicken strictly goes on the, uh, the green mountain. Um, and then I finish my ribs on the green mountain. So I'm, I'm moving things back and forth a little bit. So I use those, you know, I, I use, you know, both, both, both smokers pretty much other than chicken will not go on the QDS, but I have used, uh, you know, did well on chicken on the QDS. It just, easier for me it, with the timeline to just do it on the, the green mountain. So on the green mountain, that's a pellet smoker, right? Correct. The green mountain is. And, um, so yep. when you do your, you do your chicken, your whole chicken program stays on the, on that, on that smoker there. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. 
I was uh, cuz I was wondering always how they did chicken on those those drums. But uh, now let me ask you this, do you do you have any places that that sell these drums like a like a walk-in store or a brick and mortar? Uh yes, we do. We have a few. Um there's one in uh um Megabyte over in um uh, over in uh, outside of Orlando. Um we're working on some other places uh in the country and actually we're getting ready to uh Hopefully, uh, ship a, a, a large uh, quantity over to Australia. So that wow. we're still working on a deal to to get them over to Australia. And uh, I was over in I was over in the Netherlands for a con- couple. I'm just getting ready to ask. Tell me, tell me, tell me a little bit about that trip. Oh, uh, that was a blast. You know, if you want any time when you get to hang out with my brother and uh, you know some other guys. Uh, you know, my, Michael McDermott uh, was over there with us, and uh, every. Um, it, we had a blast. We went over there for, for a week. Um, we went over there just to, to try to make some connections and have a, have a, have a good time. And, you know, we went over there and I've never been to, uh, to Europe. So we, we went over there and spent the first few days over in Amsterdam and mm-hmm. obviously had a blast over there. And then we went to the Hague for the, uh, the contest and I can't wait to go back next year. Um, is it, is it, is the barbecue? I hate I hate to use the word "scene" because it sounds so groovy. Uh, what's it like? Is are, is barbecue becoming interesting to the folks there? Or are they trying it? Or is it or is it something yeah, that barbecue, they've always done? Yeah, barbecue over there, and and I'm hearing it from you know not just in Europe, but over in Australia, talking to some buddies over there. Um, and what I've seen over in Europe is what we see probably over here. You know, ten you know, 10, 15 years ago, the, 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 the vibe is they're just, it's, they're just getting, it, it's kind of new to them. And it's like, it, it's, it's pretty interesting to see those guys, you know, where we go to a pull up to a contest in, in the States over here and everybody's got these, you know, these big rigs, air conditioned, you know, whatever, you don't, you know, you got your, you know, I call my trailer, my home away from home. I got everything in there that I need, but these guys over there, they're in the, you know, 10 by 10 10 where we were, you know, 10 years ago, right. you know, and, and then you could see the, uh, you know, the, 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 the love for um, American barbecue. And, and you could see it with, with products, even, even in products, you know, there's a lot more products um, being, you know, imported over there and um, they're using, you know, similar products we are, you know, using here. So Jim, are it, they, it, are, it's, are it's, they... it's, it's kind of interesting to see, see, you know, I, I started, started 10 years ago, obviously I wasn't in the, you know, the beginning with it, you know, over here but i could see where where 10 years ago it has changed drastically over here yeah that i could see some of the things that we used to do um you know 10 years ago just being done over there it's 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 going to be interesting and and i and i I hopefully i can be a part of that you know getting product over there and even going over there and competing because i I think the the vibe over there is just it just um yeah it's just amazing the WTBBQ World Tour Barbecue. How cool would that be? Yeah, you talk yeah. about a real world. Yeah, when, and we, yeah. We, when we went over there, uh, I was asked to go over there, and, and we did kind of a like a Ryder Cup, which Ryder Cup in, in golf is. Yeah. You know, you know, the Americans versus the Europeans. So we took we there was five European teams uh, that went over there, competed against. Uh, we had our own little side kind of bet kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So we 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 competed with, with the five best European teams. So um, who won? It was it was pretty pretty uh, interesting. Who won? Um, the Europeans. I think they had a little <laughs> bit of advantage. Uh, I, I I told them that I said next year you guys need to come over here and you know and, and play out and where we we don't have to you know beg borrow and steal you know equipment and and, and products and and their and their uh, their meat over there is a little bit well I, I would say it, it's different than what we get over here. Um, the when they turn in, were, when like, they turn in chicken, are they turning it in the same way that we do here? Kind of weird, or or they? More... Yeah, yeah. Every everything everything is what I I've seen. A little similar to here, uh, but chicken are very small. Um, you know, it's like a uh, an extra large uh, uh, chicken nugget. I mean, they were pretty small. The yeah. uh, the pork butts, just the way they trim. Uh, the pork butts, I would say, just one butt, just the way they trimmed it, it was probably uh, 30 pounds. Uh, oh, my. Are you kidding? Uh, 30, yeah. 30 pounds. Yeah. And it just be, 
Well, it, it's just not the butt part. It's just a, the, that's a ten pound. That's a ten pound money muscle. <laughs> <laughs> well, now the money muscle is about the same, but it's just the way they trim it, and the, the ribs still has the, you know the belly meat on there. We have to trim off, um, and you know, and, and the triscuits are they're they're similar to what we we get over here. Mm-hmm. But uh, all good food though. When, when, when it's all oh, said, oh yeah, done, all right? good. Yeah, it, it's it's similar. Um, I, I had some stuff over there, you know, tasting. You know, we you know. The Europeans wanted to taste what you know the Americans were trying. We mm-hmm. vice versa, and Absolutely. it was it was all it was pretty similar. Um, so the flavor profiles are, are very, very similar. Jim Elzer, please give that that website uh, out one more time. We got several watching and listing here on Facebook. Um, yeah, all the information for the product, uh, the QDSs. Um, that's uh, Sweet Smoke. Just Sweet Smoke. The letter Q dot com. And the full line of. Um, uh, sauces, injections, uh, rubs coming. And, uh, Jim, do you still sell that single needle injector uh, out of the, uh, yes, I do. That yes, is, um, yeah, uh, I was, I, I've got, I bought I was, one and, and that is the best injector I have ever owned in my life. We used it. We used it last week to do a Turkey on a little demonstration. And I said, that's where I got it was from Jim Elzer. And uh, it has served me well for about three years. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, you know, I, I, we we sell quite a few of them, and uh, yeah. get ready to repackage it and uh, you know put some uh, put some bells and whistles on that a little bit. And, and you know, like I said, we're gonna have some new some new stuff coming out in 2019. And we're we're excited. Uh, you know, what's going to come. Well, Jim, let's in the next year. Listen, let's stay in touch on these drums. I've got some. Uh, things going on in my service station. We'll get, we're going to be getting a little bit more into the barbecue business. And, uh, I've got my eye on those drums. I think that'd be a tremendous, uh, item to, uh, have in stock and sell. So we'll be in touch on that. Okay. And man, that. man, I appreciate your time. You don't know how much we appreciate you being here on the Alice hey, barbecue show. We really Thanks, appreciate Steve it. Steve and you, Emma. And, um, it was nice talking to you guys. And we'll, I'm sure we'll see you in the spring somewhere down the road. Oh yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be traveling all over. It seems all like right. take and it easy. I never I never stay planted too long. Take it easy on me when you see me. All right, man. Thanks. <laughs> I'll Appreciate try. You. Jim Elzer, everybody joining us uh, live from uh, the Q uh, Sweet Smoke Q base down there near Winter Haven, Florida. Before we go to, I'm going to give Chris Finkbone here a call in just a moment. Before we go to him, don't forget, folks, at the Midnight Oil and Noodle, while we have the complete line of Butcher Barbecue products in stock we've got the injections we've got all the uh, sauces he's got a, a a great new line of sauces he's got a uh smoked chipotle's uh line of uh, barbecue sauce now he's got a um, an apple orchard uh barbecue sauce that i had i had chicken nuggets for for lunch can you believe that emma i had chicken nuggets <laughs> And Actually, I, I do believe that. <laughs> and I used the uh, his barbecue sauce on there, and uh, he is uh, David is just he's a, just a fantastic marketer, and if he's got it, we've got it at the Midnight Oil in Ottawa. Okay, let's go to that's the wrong that's the wrong one. Let's go to we're gonna call Chris here. Let me see. I believe that is Chris's number right there. Bear with me just a minute. We're going to Chris Finkbone from the city of Lafayette, Georgia. And he's going to talk. We're going to talk about something that is really, really special that's going on. Hey, Steve. Hey, Chris. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Oh, man, we're doing, we're doing fantastic. I appreciate you taking the time. I've got my, uh, I've got my daughter, Emma, here with us. If uh, anybody has a question as we're as we're talking, please put it on Facebook. And uh, Emma, if you would, real quick, before we get going with Chris, uh, read uh, Frank's uh, uh, comment. To everybody uh, enjoyed the segment. Always a new twist. Thanks, Frank. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate you listening, folks. I've got on the line with us now from the city of Lafayette, Georgia, Chris Finkbone. And uh, Chris has been responsible the last couple of years for putting together one of the one of the best small barbecue contests in our area at the Honeybee Festival in Lafayette. Uh, Chris, I know you know our team, uh, Al's Nest Barbecue, has been down there twice. Uh, both times you've had it, but um, 
this year, I, I think I think it's safe to say that it's going to be kind of special, isn't it? It is, Steve, and uh, and thanks to you for having me on tonight to uh, shine a little light on our on our new and bigger competition. This Absolutely. Year. But we're going with uh, KCBS sanctioning this year, uh, mainly because we're growing this thing, and we just had to have a good sanctioning body on board to give us the mm-hmm. to give us the credibility and the the help that we need to put something like this on. So we're excited about that. About I saw I saw where here. your your rep is going to be, Dave Amen. And uh, Dave, Dave lives down. I think he's in Kennesaw. He's not very far from us. And uh, Dave will do a great job for you. He's a he's a fantastic. He's number one. He's a great barbecue cook. Number two, he's a great a KCBS rep. Now, 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 Chris. I know, I know, I, I know. As I look towards the heavens, hands folded, that we're surely we're not going to be in that little parking lot, are we? No. Thank goodness. Uh, part of growing <laughs> this thing, we had. We only had room for 12 teams the, the first two years of the Honeybee Festival, which were 2017 and 2018. So this year, for 2019, we are moving about two blocks west to the old Lafayette High School football practice field. Okay. And the, the great thing about working for a municipality, uh, the city of Lafayette, we have our own electric department, we mm-hmm. have our own water department, so they can put our own uh, infrastructure in there, we can get water and electric in the way we want it, the right way. And we're going to have room. We're going to we're going to have service. Our goal this year is to be able to house forty to fifty total teams. Oh, Chris, uh, that's a big that's, that's a big contest. Series. That's a big contest. It is, and that that'll be the master series and the backyard uh-huh. and actually master uh, backyard series also. Right. And we've got room for more than that, but we're not. We're being careful not to bite off more than we can chew. I think, and we're going to try to. We're going to try to. We're going to try to get forty or fifty this year and, wow. and see how it goes. You'll uh, you'll have some of the best teams. And now now I was we were just talking with uh, Jim Elzer from Sweet Smoke Q down in Florida. You you will get. We are close enough to um, Florida, believe it or not, that we will get some of those teams. Will travel up here. Uh, and compete in that uh, in the event, you'll be surprised how many people from all over the uh, southeast and central United States will come to compete. When you've got a um, when the facility that you've got, um, that word will get around. When you got you know you got water for everybody, electricity for everybody, plenty of space for forty to fifty teams. That's a that has the makings of a um, a contest that what they call has legs it can has some staying power i agree and i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to to meeting some some new people we've uh we had a lot of we had a lot of the same people in our first two yeah competitions Uh, i feel good about that too because that that tells me that people enjoyed it and were willing to come back and and spend the weekend with us again the second year so so I'm looking forward to meeting some new people too I'm, i'm always excited about that now we're going to tell sean cosby that the contest has moved to Resaca that weekend, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's between you and Sean. I, I'm afraid I have to send him an email that says different. Send, uh, send, 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 send it to me first, and I'll forward it to him, okay? <laughs> he's a fierce competitor. He, he's, yeah. uh, he, makes, he makes some good ball with you. He, uh, Sean is uh, – uh, Sean, for everybody that knows Sean or doesn't know Sean, he owns the uh, Choo Choo Barbecue on East Brainerd Road, and he has he started competing. I guess about two or three years ago, maybe maybe longer than that. And uh, he wins every everything in this area. He he wins it, Chris. He is he's fantastic. And um, this will really be he won out. he won big at uh, with the Gulf Shores or where where was he Orange Beach somewhere? Yeah, he sure did. He won big down there. He made the final. He made the final ten, as as did Jim Elzer in the uh, world World Food Championship barbecue table. He cooked right next to Jim Elzer, so um, I'm sure they met down there. You know, Chris, we were we we talk uh, all the time about uh, competition barbecue, um, how how expensive it has gotten, not only for teams. You know, a team you can go, you can compete. That's what's neat about barbecue. You can compete at all kinds of different levels. You can. You can buy a trailer. You can buy a tent. 
you can cook on a, a drum smoker like Jim sells for um, for for under a thou way way under a thousand dollars, or you can um, you can buy a a smoker that's oh my gosh that's up to you know the sky's the limit ten ten you know fifteen thousand dollars, but to make these contests work, it's almost too expensive now for a a, a person, say, if I wanted to, to sponsor a KCBS event, uh, th- they're just so expensive to put on that I, I, I really do think that that the KCBS organization, Florida Barbecue Association, uh, the World Food Championships, um, the MBN, all these different sanctioning bodies are going to have to team up with cities the size of Lafayette that that they can, you, you know, talk to and say, you know, we're going to bring this many people into your community and have an economic impact that's that's pretty serious. And the, in the cities of your size that you work for, they can afford the infrastructure. That's what it takes. And it takes, it takes good, confident people at City Hall to make this thing happen. Uh, we have an excellent city manager, mayor, and council, and they really work hard behind the scenes. They, they do a lot of stuff that, that most people never see to make things like this happen. And this festival is bringing, uh, they, they took conservative estimates last year. We don't have exact numbers because it's a free event. We don't charge admission right. to the right gates. But conservative estimates last year, this, this festival brought 35,000 people in one day with yeah. more than 20 bands on three stages with two big headliners. We had uh, Craig Campbell and Joe Nichols last year. And one of the things that I'm excited about this year is we've got a new sponsor on with us this year, that, and they help us with talent. They help us negotiate contracts with uh, performers and whatnot. Rock 105 is coming on board this year, uh, and they want a brand Friday night as Rock 105 night. I don't know exactly what they're going to do yet. If we're going to have a, a big concert, I, they haven't told me yet. Unless it's just not negotiated yet. But that's what it's looking like. And they want to brand this thing with a big barbecue competition. They want to see a bunch of smoke blowing oh my. on Friday night. So, I mean, that just, it just fit right in. Well, are, so, are you going to have – uh, will you have the KCBS, um, the, uh, the steak – sanctioning contest there as well on Friday night. What did you think about it last year? Steve? Oh, it was, like it? I thought it was great. I wish I didn't have to go first because <laughs> I felt like I was really put at a, <laughs> I'm going to start <laughs> whining right now. Somebody's going to ask me if I want cheese, but other than that, I thought it was great. And uh, well, I, I, did I, I love, I love, I love the state contest and you know, KCBS now has a, a steak grilling um, uh, apparatus installed that they, um, you can, you know, go through them and they'll sanction that for you. I didn't know that, yes. but I, I do want to keep it for this year, whether it be sanctioned or not. Uh, I like, you know, any, any time we get a chance to, to put you on Facebook live, which we did on our city of the Fayette page and, and put a microphone in your face. We always, we always take advantage of that. I'm so bad. You represent our sport. Well, and we appreciate that. So we uh, we had the live judging, which I think went very well. Mm-hmm. We had uh, our mayor actually serving the judges, uh, giving them the food, and, and my daughter helped with some of that as well. So it was it was just a it was just a nice thing. To, you only see this kind of stuff in in small town uh, atmospheres like we've got here with, with friendly people like we've got. And I think the the whole thing the whole the whole thing went well. There were three competitors that chose not to compete in the state competition on Friday night for whatever reason. And two of them found me later and said they really regretted not competing yeah. because they saw how much fun we had and they saw they saw the, the little crowd that had attracted there and it was they, they felt like they missed out on a good thing. Well there was I, I do want to do it again this year. There was a lot of energy there was a lot of energy there. You can um I Chris, Chris I'll tell you state contests People love them, and I think what you'll do is, on if you have it Friday night, you'll get people that have no interest in doing barbecue, but uh, they cook a good steak. You know, you'll get a lot of backyard people, a lot of people that you know the the 
you know, the local king of the cul-de-sac guy or gal, they'll show up. They'll go, yeah, I'll, I'll bring my grill down there and I'll, I'll, I'll compete with these people. Cause you don't have to, that. you don't have to be a great barbecue or to cook a great steak. Um, I mean, Sean Cosby's going to win anyway. It doesn't matter, but you know, you won't all be cooking for second. <laughs> I did. I did sample his steak, and it, it was outstanding. I, yeah, he's, so I, I didn't sample all of them. It was very good. Yeah, don't give him too big. Uh, don't give him too big. He'll be in Resaca next year. Um, well, that caters to people like me because I, you know, the first year for the Honeybee Festival, my city manager David Hamilton came to me. He said, he said, what do you think about barbecue? I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, what do you think about barbecue? I said, I love barbecue. He said, yeah. He said, you're my man. We want to put on a barbecue competition at the Honeybee Festival. <laughs> I said, well, now, you know, understand this. I don't know anything about how to make it. I don't know anything about how to prepare it. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I said, but I do like barbecue. It doesn't matter if it's pork, chicken, beef. It doesn't matter. I like it. He said, well, that's all you need to know. He said, all you've got to do is organize this thing. You don't actually have to cook. So but the steak competition, I think, is good for, for people like me. Hey, I don't know how to, I don't know how to make barbecue. You, you wouldn't want to eat it if I made it. That's just the way it is. But I do make a pretty good steak, so mm-hmm. not, not that I'm going to compete. I wouldn't do that, but it's uh, – well, well, you should, Chris. I, it opens it up. It opens it up. You really should because um, the uh, – the, yeah, there's a there's a, a sanctioning body for steak out there in addition to KCBS. It's called the Steak Cook-Off Association, and that – that um, their tournament uh, trail has, has taken off. Uh, in the United States, there are more and more people that are cooking steaks now. Um, I think I think it's pulling people away from barbecue because it's not near as expensive. It doesn't take as long, and um, it's a it's it's a whole lot of fun to just sit there and uh, you know you've got you know what you what it takes in barbecue. What it takes us twelve fifteen hours to do, you know they start and they're done in about eight eight to twelve minutes, and. Um, Right. And, uh, right. It, and it does bring and a it good crowd. And it's, much, on Friday night. and it's much more exciting watching somebody cook a steak than watching somebody watch a smoker. You know, it's just, right. it's just, it just lends itself to more friendly atmosphere as far as fan favorites. Um, the, um, I, you know, I just think that's fantastic. The first year that you're going out there, you'll be, you know, trying to attract 40 teams it's your your contest. I think it's May the thirty first. Is it? Yes, May the thirty first and June the first. Yeah, in Saturday. Perfect. That's the perfect weekend for it. It's the uh, perfect time of year. You know, um, on May the tenth is the Roman roast down in uh, Rome, Georgia. Another small town. I know that Rome's a lot bigger than Lafayette, but uh, another smaller smaller municipal area that puts a lot of money and a lot of time into that barbecue contest, Chris. And that's one of my favorites. I, I, I very seldom, I haven't missed that in three years. That is a, a great contest and there's no reason in the world. The honeybee festival can't uh, equal the success that the Roman roast has just down the road in Rome, Georgia. Well, I agree. I haven't been to that one. Uh, I've been to the one they have in Calhoun, uh, and I've been to one in Winchester, Tennessee, and I've been to one that a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, Jason Poe, organizes in Asheville, Tennessee, on Smoke on the Shores. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, great, that's a great one, yeah. It is, and they do a great job up there. But uh, I, I'd like for ours to be maybe not quite that big, but hey, it's brings into something like that that time. But uh, we don't have aspirations for that right up, right off the right off the top here. But mm-hmm. I will say that this uh, the state competition and the barbecue competition combined have been a big part of transforming our event into a two day event instead of a one day event because mm-hmm. we have those things going on on Friday. Yeah. So that's uh, it was just natural for somebody else to come in and, and try to and try to make a go with this thing on Friday night. It gives our competitors something to do. You know, they set up on Friday afternoon. And they just kind of stand around and don't really have much to do oh, until no, it gets time to cook later in the evening. So, so that's that's nice. It gives you guys something to do, and hopefully, we can get you guys some some good entertainment this year. Oh, well. I'm I'm all about it. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, it's you roll in Friday afternoon after you prep meat and get it ready. It's I mean, everybody just usually they usually go out to eat, or they you know pull right. up, pull up chairs and uh, sit around and talk and visit. And, uh, right. the and that's, steak, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's no, nothing wrong. wrong with it at all. But the steak, but the steak cook-off just adds a little more. 
a, a little more opportunity to smack talk and uh, compete. And, um, and that's what, and that's what we do. That's what we do there. It's, it's once you, I mean, folks, I, I, you know, I, I say all the time, it's for people that have a competitive bone in their body, uh, pro, uh, professional barbecue is, it fulfills that need to compete. It really does. It is a, it does. if it's, hey, if bowling is a sport, if golf's a sport, barbecue competition is a sport. If, uh, sure. if bowling, if bowling and golf are activities, yeah. Then barbecue is an activity, but it's a good activity. And <laughs> it is. It is. Any way you put it, if it's good, yeah. <laughs> you can't beat you can't beat it. So the the city of Lafayette on uh, May the thirty first and June the first will have the uh, the Honey Bee. I guess what the Honey Bee Barbecue Classic or something like that. I guess. And um, uh, just don't call it an invitational, okay? <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Just don't call it an invitational <laughs> because everybody calls their contest invitational and lets anybody come. That just, that just kills me. I do an invitational. Yeah, good. I do an invitational here in Udawa. Yeah. I do an invitational in Udawa, but you got to be invited. <laughs> um, well, one of the things that, that I want to mention, Steve, before we get off here is we, we couldn't put this thing on without our Lafayette high school band. These kids, their parents, the band director, the band boosters, they yeah. show up and they're, they're our feet on the ground. They, they really work their butts off during the day and the night before and make this thing happen. So we always uh, write them a check at the end of the day. We, we, we do this thing and we try to make it affordable and then we, we try to make a good purse and all this is to be announced. But, uh, you know, we, we couldn't do it without these kids. And when we write them a check at the end of the day, it, it, uh, I don't know how far it goes, but it does help to, to keep their program, you know, have something good for, for our local kids to, to have. And uh, well, we Chris, do it without well, I, I take I, I take Chris, somebody that sits on the sidelines like me and watches watches uh, contests. We lost the one in Calhoun that's that's usually uh, this coming upcoming weekend. We've lost that one, and we were unfortunately we're losing a lot of contests because they are so expensive. I just I appreciate these small municipalities or any municipality for that matter, stepping up and underwriting these contests because they do bring in, they bring in a lot of tourists because we all bring our families with us. Uh, we do, we do have an economic impact. And, uh, you know, when I, I always make it a point when I go to a city, I don't buy the things that I need to buy last minute. I don't buy until I get to that city just to make sure like, you know, for, for competition, the things you have to buy like garnish and things like that. I always make sure, I buy it in the city where I'm going to to show support and to thank them, you know, for putting on these contests. That. You bet. And we'll be doing it again there in Lafayette. Uh, Chris Finkbone, um, if anybody is, – is there a website or a Facebook page up yet? I know it's early. We Well, this is all brand new. We just got our date uh, carved in stone about a week ago. Yeah. But we do have our uh, – we have two websites. We have – honeybeefestival.com and we have mycityoflafayettega.org and there are updates on there there are vendor applications there will be barbecue competitor applications competition applications um, I don't I don't know with KCBS on board this is all brand new I haven't even spoken to the rep yet that's how new this is so so I've got to figure out how to, to make all that work and, and, and keep them happy and keep us happy and, and keep our competitors happy. So, well, you're fine. You'll uh, find you that, that you'll find that their job is keeping you happy. They're a great organization yeah, we, to work with. We, we appreciate that. Okay. And we're on Facebook, city of Lafayette GA and honeybee festival. We're all over Facebook. You can, you can see us there. And That's if you need, a if you need David's phone there. number, Chris, if you need David's phone number, I've got it right here in this little black box. <laughs> Okay, I, I, keep I appreciate it. that. I, I keep it. I keep. Oh, yeah. I keep it close. We may just put it out there one day, just for plugs. Everybody will call Dave Amen and give him <laughs> give him all. I write it on the bathroom wall. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> Chris. Thank you so much, and we'll see you. We'll thank see you before then, I'm sure, but we'll see you for sure on uh, May 31st at the uh, Honeybee Festival down in uh, Lafayette, Georgia. Well, okay, thanks that, for having me on. Steve. You bet, thanks Chris. For, you come on up to the lot. Come on up and see, and I'll buy you a real Mexican Coca-Cola. Folks, that's just about it for Emma and I. Emma, thank you so much. We sure appreciate you helping out. Don't forget, everybody, follow us on YouTube for all the past interviews on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show. It's 
some special segments that we've done from time to time. Don't forget, we're also on Vimeo as well. Follow our barbecue adventures on Facebook, on my personal page, and on the Al's Desk Barbecue page. Check out Instagram. Follow us on Instagram at Udawa Steve. And uh, thank you, Jim Elzer. Thank you, Chris Finkbone. And make sure you tune in next Wednesday night right here at 7 on Facebook Live for another fun time on Al's Nest Barbecue. We'll see you next Wednesday. Or not before.